Alex was diagnosed with hearing loss at birth. I would say it was the most traumatic experience in my life. When I take off my hearing aids and cochlear implant at night, everything just sort of vanishes in a way. It took me longer to talk than most kids because I couldn't hear what they were saying, so I couldn't like copy it. We had never heard about children that had hearing loss. We didn't know anything about what we needed to do. We had no resources. Um, I remember the frustration just as a mother, just like, am I really understanding my kids? The number one disability that the Veterans Administration is seeing right now is noise-induced hearing loss and tinnitus. When I received the diagnosis, I really hit a very, very low rock bottom depressive state and, and, and it was affecting people around me. Hearing loss is incredibly common. It's one of the most common sensory deficit among humans. I think we have to go from it being hidden to being visible. I found out about my hearing loss when I was 17 and the guy informed me at that time that I had a significant hearing loss and I didn't qualify for the Air Force ROTC. He kept asking me, did you listen to loud music? Had you ever had um, damage to your ears? And I kept saying, no, no, no. I started experiencing some hearing loss and noticing it more and more. I was tested, I found out that I had severe hearing loss and I needed to do something about it. At four, they noticed, mom noticed that I started not responding to her and they tested me. That is actually the very first time that anybody told my parents, told me that I had hearing loss. I started dating Socrates back in 2011 and a year and a half into our relationship, I got the Usher syndrome diagnosis. It is the leading cause of deaf blindness. Tinnitus, uh, in almost all cases, uh, it's, it's caused by the brain's reaction to a loss of hearing. Hearing loss I know began when I was a young captain in the Army, about maybe eight years into my career, and I noticed I could hear a watch ticking on one side in one ear, but I couldn't hear it in my other ear. I was hearing on the pillow at night a bit of a ringing in the ears. Nothing has yet emerged as something that um, uh, on a reliable basis can reduce the impact of tinnitus. Ethan was diagnosed with hearing loss right away when we were still in the hospital with him. He realized that this is your child and you're gonna love them no matter what. When the hearing loss uh, was confirmed, I felt that this is a challenge for all of us, for Alex the most but I felt that I have to do everything in my power to make sure I uh, help him in every way I can. My mom would like try to like ask me to answer the questions to make sure that I didn't have ear problems. She was like, Emmy, do you want some ice cream? And I couldn't, I couldn't hear, so I just wandered away. Kids just don't know how to interact with other kids that are just different. And I remember these little kids came up to me and they started yanking out my hearing aids because they could see them. Obviously, they were exposed. And uh, they threw them in the trash. And I remember just being so angry. He's a child who's faced by something that is different from many kids. And being different is difficult. Ethan is aware that other children don't wear hearing aids, but because he's been wearing them for so long and has interacted with children both with hearing loss and without hearing loss since such a young age, I don't think it really occurs to him to say, oh, I'm different and that's a problem. The audiologist recommended that he has a cochlear implant. It was a big positive step helping him deal with the hearing loss. When I put these on, it just makes everything so much better and I just feel like I'm being myself when I have these and I just feel really happy to hear like this with these. We hear with our brains. That may seem a counterintuitive thing to say, but the cochlea sends information to the brain. 
Because the cochlea basically just tells you how loud a sound is and how high or low it is, it isn't really doing any computation. That is done by the brain. A cochlear implant can do what a hearing aid can't. It can restore clarity of hearing. My mother put the markers and the paints right in front of me. I started seeing how he would draw and what colors he'll use. He knows exactly when the piece is finished. My art represents my hearing because when I wake up in the morning and I hear the birds, it's just that my world becomes colorful. Around nine, I fell in love with the stars um, when I got my first telescope and I was convinced I was going to be an astronaut. And so very early that was kind of taken away from me when I found out about the hearing loss. And, and so that dream of wanting to be an astronaut, maybe that part wasn't going to come true. I can still help send people to space. I've become involved with the Hearing Health Foundation and become a board member. I want to be an advocate for more than just the veteran population, but anyone with a hearing condition. For us, we want to be involved with an organization whose goal is to improve the quality of life of all people with hearing loss. We wanted to find an organization that uh, does charitable work and at the same time research to find cure for hearing loss. If we're not doing anything, we're not doing anything to help our child. The Hearing Health Foundation it has a whole board of council of scientific trustees that look at the different grants and figure out which are the areas most important for funding. The Emerging Research Grant was the first grant that I ever got as an independent scientist. My hope is, uh, is primarily that the Foundation will continue to be able to uh, amass the resources to continue to fund uh, these programs and, and fund them at a, at a generous level because getting young investigators and, and also young ideas off the ground is, is crucial to the development of any scientific field. I became a member of the Hearing Restoration Project actually from its inception. Unlike many cells in the body that can be replaced after they've been damaged or killed, the hair cells of the inner ear don't grow back. At least they don't grow back in mammals. The Hearing Restoration Project scientists work on different animals, some of which can regenerate and some cannot. Part of the motivation for setting up the Hearing Restoration Project was to bring together scientists working on this problem from different backgrounds and using different approaches. If we can succeed in achieving that goal of hair cell restoration, regrowth, and make those hair cells connect up with the auditory nerve fibers that connect to the brain, uh, that would that would be a, a marvelous thing for hearing loss, and it would, uh, in all likelihood, uh, correct tinnitus as well for those who have both hearing loss and tinnitus. As a board member and someone with hearing loss, my hope is that the Hearing Restoration Project is successful. Some great science has taken place over the course of the past seven years since the project was kicked off. I'm glad that the doctors are like working on trying to find out how fish and birds can restore their hearing and people can't. And if they find anything, then people can restore their hearing. Hearing loss, uh, unfortunately, is a hidden disability. We can't hide it anymore. We have to bring it to the front. The awareness is uh, very important about hearing loss because people need to understand that the correct support can help anyone. It's a little bit more difficult perhaps to raise awareness for things that don't have an outward appearance of harm. It's a, the sufferer is truly uh, invisible. Not about acceptance, just about utilizing the right tools to feel like you can survive and function appropriately. When people see that I can be successful, it gives parents who are pushing those kids hope that they, their kids can do something amazing as well. I sold my paintings to help find a cure for hearing loss. I was able to show that I wanted to help others find a cure so that everyone can hear naturally. I wanted others to know that hearing makes me happy. It's funny, when I hear about hearing preservation or hearing conservation now, that means so much more to me than it did when I was a child. Or even when I was a soldier and we were told to wear hearing protection. 
I think the natural tendency is for us to think we're invulnerable and you're, we're not going to be degraded by loud concerts or loud noises or sound exposure. One of the causes of hearing loss is noise exposure. There is so much noise around us, whether it's the subway trains, the cars, the construction, and noise is really one of the biggest contributors to hearing loss. When it's extremely intense, even very briefly so, uh, it can literally mechanically tear and, and break cells in the inner ear. Hearing health is such a underrated aspect of our lives that we just take for granted. At least the last 10 or 15 years that I've been in hearing aids, I've been a better mother. And now at least I can actually say that when I have a conversation with my kids, it's more of me truly listening and participating with them. My mother, now 88 years old, has hearing loss, pretty significant. I've talked to her about the problems associated with not having hearing aids and keeping connected with her family, which continues to grow and she's expecting a great grandchild now. An untreated hearing loss, one that hasn't been managed with, with hearing aids, for example, uh, will cause people to not only have difficulties in conversation, but in many cases to withdraw. There's a lot of work now that shows as we become sensory deprived, we can't hear, our vision deteriorates. So poor quality of life, cognitive decline. One of the things that has happened over the last 25 years has been the institution of infant hearing screening at birth. Screening for newborn uh, hearing is essential. Early detection is the key. Alex's speech and hearing would have been affected in a negative way. It made a tremendous difference, not just to us, but also to Ethan and his development with his speech, with his hearing. He has such a wonderful appetite for learning. He has never used his hearing loss as an excuse for anything. It's that drive that probably makes me most proud of him. There are so many things that we take for granted and we don't think about them till we are faced with challenges. I know that with the right accommodations and with the right support, you can truly soar. My parents have helped me the most. They made me more comfortable. I'm just really glad they were there. We all struggle. We all have our challenges. We all have our, and I love this word, disabilities, and yet that disability sets me apart from everyone else. The Hearing Health Foundation is working on a cure, and that's very important to me because I just feel like I'll be able to be more independent. Now, more than ever, I'm concerned about the people coming along behind me and how we can best preserve their hearing. I never would have thought when I was 17 that I could still be living my dream. You know, now I'm where I want to be and it's extremely fulfilling and really happy. Success is that we make the world aware of hearing loss. It's consequence to people. Success also means being able to engage people who have the means to realize these goals of curing hearing loss, preventing hearing loss. Hearing Health Foundation is so committed to this vision, and I'm so proud to be part of it. I hope for one day, HHF to not have to exist anymore. If it ceases to exist, then it accomplished what it needed to accomplish. That will be the day that I'm most proud of HHF, when we could put ourselves out of business, when we've cured hearing loss, when we've cured tinnitus, and we've cured deafness.